All right, you beautiful people. Thank you for joining us again today on Colors and Covers here live in Dallas. We are back with another beautiful artist. Um, we're going to be having the beautiful, amazing Tay uh, Taylor, right? Taylor yes. King Rogers. Tay um, Taylor T. As long as you don't call me Tay Tay, <laughs> then we don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to tell you about this beautiful artist. She's a painter in Dallas. Um, if you haven't seen her out here, she'd be out in events. She'd be painting live. Um, uh, she's a model. What else do you do, girl? Um, you know, I do a lot. I do a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a multi-entrepreneurial life we got going on. So there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot. I do leasing. I do investing. I do painting. So, yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Can you tell the people your um, handle on Instagram? Yeah. So, um, you can find me on IG. That's really the only platform that I use. So, it is Rogers. Rogers with a D. Um, you guys should be able to see it on the screen. So, go ahead. Give me a follow. I may or may not follow you back. <laughs> at, least, at least she's being honest. Yeah. I'm being at honest, At least she's being honest. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'm so happy that you are here with us today and um, that we get to experience your art. So, uh, can you briefly tell us what you're doing right now on the screen? Yes. So, um, right now, you know, recently in my artwork, I've gotten into more impressionist styles. So, um, I'm just exploring um, different, you know, biblical symbols lately. Um, so, my last painting was like this beautiful cross with the flames coming up. Um, so I'm starting to explore that more. Um, my art has definitely developed a lot since I've been painting for about a year and a half, two years now. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I personally have um, seen her evolve into from different um, things since I've uh, met her. And I think it was probably maybe close to a year ago when, like a little after you started painting is when, when right. I met you. So um, I've seen her some... I've seen her do some beautiful things and um, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be at events where she's participated in as well and she's done light painting there and it's an experience to be honest with you a lot of artists come out here and show out but uh, some of us do it a certain way you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> well um, tell us a little bit about you where are you from um, so I'm from DFW Muchplex. I moved around a lot. Um, I'm based out in like Plano area right now, but I grew up around like Arlington, Grapevine. Um, but I've been in DFW my whole life. So Texas born and raised. Awesome. So yes. um, have you done artistry in another state yet? Oh, I have not. Not yet. It's coming, right? Yeah, it's definitely yes. coming. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so what is, um, I know that you said that you just changed the flow of your art, mm -hmm. but what is the the um, the style of artistry that you first started with? So I, man, I don't even know what to call it. Um, it. I mean, it all started with just throwing paint on a canvas, and that's something that I still do, like, I love layers and when I'm doing live art, I can't really do that because it's messy and it's expressive, um, but I like creating texture. Um, my art usually has at least 10 layers, so it's not something that is like finished in one go most of the time. Um, I think the more layers, the more complexity, um, just the more depth, um, that's that's what I love. So that's what I, that's what I, that's what I do. And that's what you've been doing since you started? Pretty much. I mean, there's different <clears throat> techniques that I've developed over time, mm -hmm. but um, this is something that always persists is having multiple layers and multiple textures. I like hiding random stuff in my painting, so I'm constantly collecting like little notes and like little pieces of trash and I have one painting I hit a toenail in and yes, for, the, for those who know, painting. know, so... <laughs> Um, you know, it's some weird stuff that we do as artists. Um, I feel like the older I get, the weirder I get, and I love it. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that. The older we get, the weirder we get. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's just so much more of a, a, a freer version of ourselves where right. we get to express ourselves to the full meaning of who we are and who like we're trying to be at the moment. So I definitely get that and I applaud that because I, I definitely think that a lot of people 
should express themselves that way and should be able to make a decision where they're they're just comfortable in, you know, and and then be able to shift it too because it's not always just that one, you know. Yeah, I mean, and I feel like a lot of it is really rediscovering your inner child yes. because we get older and we, you know, hear... Um, I, I know I had like one particular person that came into my life and I wasn't self-conscious until that one person came in and spread that mindset onto me. And like mindset is like 90% of success. Like mindset is everything. So, you know, if you're constantly being fed the wrong information, that's your paradigm that you're going to form and it's going to change your habits. It's going to change the way you think it's going to change you know, your lifestyle, your progress, everything. So it really comes down to the way that we think and um, our self-belief and self-esteem in ourselves. So let me ask you a question. Um, when you first started doing our, uh, were you specifically inspired by one thing that you're like, I want to do this. And that's like the thing that made you start doing it? No. Um, I mean, it was, I always did like DIY projects and stuff growing up. And then, um, I got to college and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith. Like everybody tells me like starving artists, da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, you know, what? I want to pursue this and see if it's something that I can really take action on. Um, but I didn't get into painting until after I dropped out of college. Like I dropped out of college with a 4.0. Like mm -hmm. I, I met a group of entrepreneurs and I was like, Hmm, it changed the way I think. And um, I mean, right now I'm paying my bills. I live on my own. Like I'm doing my own thing. And I went to college for three semesters and dropped out. Not saying that's for everybody. Like some people, you need education to do what you want to do. Um, but you can get educated in different ways than going to college. So that's, that's kind of my thought process and my experience um, personally. Um, so right now with the painting that you're doing, what are you using? So I got the liquid sex, I got the artist loft, and I got, uh, like craft smart paint. Like acrylic? I really don't, yeah, it's all acrylic. I don't really use anything special. Um, each paint has its own purpose, especially like with cheaper paints. A lot of people think you can't make good art with cheap yeah, supplies no. but the, yeah way. but the cheapest paints <laughs> give me the best splatters that I love and so you just you learn along the way what works best for what you are needing um and also you can save money you really do way. honestly I find a lot of things around the house sometimes too yeah like if you have anything that ha gives that dye color I would definitely use it for art especially because I'm very pro vegan everything so um uh just using natural things is also such a great way to create art and you're just making something out of nothing especially so what so. kind of stuff do you use other than paint to make art yeah um really just anything sometimes like you know um cat can you show us oh can i also see i can't see and i feel like a little weird i feel lost um cat <laughs> yeah <laughs> um can can we see the pictures that i that i sent you of um taylor's thing remember when we did that thing that you i was taking the pictures of you and, and recording your yes. information you never I never sent them to you because for a reason. So um, <laughs> this is the artist that we have today with us. But um, I said they were like green pictures. Did you get those? I don't think so. No? Okay. Well, we're going to wait for those. But okay, 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 okay. so during that session that, that we did, it was um, I was interviewing her. And I'm still going to release that. But I wanted to show them a little bit of that because that um, that session that we did, you talked about this, um, this, uh, what is it called? The cover thing that you have that's on your table right now. 
you talked about oh, that. Oh, my curtains. Yes, your, your <laughs> curtains. I was going to call you something else, but she she keeps bringing up the curtains part. The curtains. They are curtains. So, Target, specifically. Specifically. It's her J. Specifically. Um, so when she, when I interviewed her, she had that and she explained to me the reason that, um, she has it and what she did to it and what it means to her and whatnot. And, um, I like it because she started to tell me that she puts things into her art. So she'll put different things that mean different things to her and, um, that are a vibe. Uh, but I really liked the idea that you said to me about that. So can you tell people what that means to you and, and why you have it? Yeah. So, um, these curtains, I actually bought them when I like first moved out on my own and I put them up in my apartment. Mind you, I was like, but ass naked, you know, when you move out for the first time on your own, like I was just naked everywhere. That might be too much information for y'all, but that's how it was. So, um, I put the curtains up. I hated them. Um, I took them down and they kind of just were sitting around. I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't want to use them. So, um, I was just painting one day and I was like, Hmm, I got this free cloth right here. And I started using it as like pretty much a paint rag. So these are with me in every painting that I have created so far. Like, well, since I started using them, since I moved out on my own, um, about a year ago. And so, um, they've got just an accumulation of so much, like, this one on the floor. <laughs> um, so I actually had cut it at one point, and I put a piece of it in a painting. I tied it, um, like, I punctured stabbed the canvas. It. No, y'all. <laughs> she didn't puncture it. She stabbed that hole. She would grab the scissors, and she was just like, is that what I did? Yeah, you did. You Look, did you that. you gotta do what you gotta I do. I have a video it. of it somewhere. I know that I could find it, but oh, I have a really? video. I was there, and I was just like, oh, okay, girl. You know what? I do need to thing. release. So, because <laughs> um, at one point, I thought about selling them, but I, I cut them all up, so I couldn't do that. But I just, I keep using them. Um, I've washed them a couple, I've washed them a few times. It really doesn't mess up my, mess up my washing machine or anything, so... Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just keep using them. Maybe I'll get new curtains one day and actually, like, sell them after they get to a certain point. Because I feel like this will look dope with a certain aesthetic in somebody's mm -hmm. home. So, uh, let me know if y'all if y'all think that would be something. something yeah, so, like. um, I sent, I sent Kat the thing, but I want okay. you to see. You got them? Look at it. Oh, wait a minute. These are your pictures from the, from the thing. Oh, I remember that painting. Yeah. I don't know what I did with that either. But it's, Those are it's cool. some really good shots. Like, I love the shots of your hands. And oh, stuff. that's like, amazing. Look, that's, oh, those are some of her paintings for sure. But you guys, can you see it? Let me show you. Can you see it on the screen? That's um, some of her paintings. Look at that shot. That's so cool. Bruh. That was her painting in the at her apartment. She was doing this session, and I was the this um, specific project that I'm working on, which I'm still working on a lot of different other things with other artists in Dallas. But it specifically talks about our hands and what we do with our art and how we make art from nothing, which mm. is you know us really because the way that we could just grab something and make it into something else and just create art and let other people see their inspiration. Cause like when, when he walked in and he saw that it was just something to him, but when you started, it was something to you. When mm -hmm. I'm looking at it, it's something to me. So the way that it, I see it and the way that I'm still looking at your pieces from that day and by pieces, I mean like all the, the pictures of everything that we took and, and how you demonstrated what you do in your artistry and the videos and stuff that I took of you, it was, it was to another level because it was more personal. It was just us two. We were vibing. She was yeah. explaining to me. It was a more intimate session where we really got to know you from a different perspective. And I can't wait to release that because it gives a little bit more information that I'm not even going to ask you today. So yeah. um, I really like this because it shows a different part of you. And um, now it's even more different. So I'm excited that you're here today because it does show uh, um, where where you were and how you've developed throughout the year. It's crazy because looking back at that, I completely forgot that I like, right? 
sat on that while you were there. Like, yeah. I, y'all, I used to sit on my paintings. Like, <laughs> you I would. Well, it's been a minute because it started clogging up my drain. So I had to watch what I was doing. But um, I definitely let like, me clarify what she means by that <laughs> because there's some little perverts out here. She really means her actual drains in her apartment because she showers. <laughs> She would have paint all over her body. Yeah. And then she would shower, and then it was starting to clog her drains in the shower. <laughs> what other drains would it be clogging? Girl. Sis. Anyways. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've gotten less physical with my paintings over time. Um, it's crazy because as my mind develops, my art develops. And so I know when I first moved on my own, I was like in a really bad mental state. I was really depressed and I was just letting out so much anger and so much pain into my paintings. And so um, it transitioned because it was like there was lust in those. There was sex. There was just all kinds of just negative emotions that I was really throwing into it but honestly I look back at that and it's some of my best work and so I really had to learn as my mind started growing like okay now I'm happy but like how can I translate that into my art and now my art is coming from more of a place of love yeah and so um it's crazy just seeing how my art is developing as my mindset develops um it's getting a little less chaotic and more controlled. Um, and so it's a really beautiful process. And I've only been painting for a couple of years now. So I'm really excited to see how it transitions in the next like five to 10 years. Cause I have no idea what oh, I'm going to yeah. be creating. Yeah. And, and it will develop into something else because overall as an artist, I think we all kind of go through that part where we're just, we're going with the flow of our lives. Like, you were painting right. the things that you were experiencing and the things that you chose to kind of feel a little bit more. So I definitely get that. And as you grow, um, I know you're so young. So as you grow, you're definitely going to evolve into something else and evolve into something more beautiful. And just like, and also not even that, but like evolving is more of the creativity part. But, but also of like your techniques and what you're doing and how you choose to do that and what you learn on the colors and just the things that you didn't know because like you like me you're an artist that you the you are flowing through your artistry you didn't go to school for this this no. is not something that you're like oh let me spend the years in college to do this or whatnot this is just flowing through your soul and stuff so um i think with that we also then learn different techniques and then develop into our artistry in a different way because now we're like learning specific type of things with art yeah 100 um because i mean i i went to college and i did graphic design so i was doing like digital media for a while mm -hmm. and then um i had a special experience shall we say um after i dropped out and I made this one painting this one night and that was like the tipping point for me that's when I realized like this is my passion mm -hmm. this is my calling this is my purpose and so um I'm still discovering like how my art plays into my purpose but I know for a fact that it does yeah. and so um I just keep doing it and as far as the business aspect of it, like, y'all, we ain't there yet. Um. But she does sell everything. So if you want to buy yeah, anything, just check know. her out. Let her know. Everything is for is sale. Open. The shop is open. It's definitely open. And um, and she has a variety of different art. Oh, look, there it goes. Look at um, uh, Taylor. Hmm? Look at the screen. So that's oh, some yeah. of the pictures that I took of her painting that piece. And you could see the the um, the drape in the background that she was using. 
Y'all, she put like little flakes of something in there. And she put paper and she layered it and she painted on top of it. It was really lit. Y'all, if you're not watching this, I'm talking to Instagram Live. If you're not watching this on asumbenya.com, go and check it out because she's showing the pictures of her. And her hands are just like so beautiful to me because I'm like, man, she's really just kind of doing her thing and just flowing through her artistry and she was using green and that means something and she used the colors that she used meant something so i'm um, just wait for that and that feature because this is just a couple of the pictures that that i chose to to share with y'all but the videos and everything else is like pretty lit we it was a couple uh, of a little bit of time that we spent doing that session mm -hmm. and, and going through that piece we should do so, it again yeah we should it was really awesome um to be honest with you it was a very um a very uh intimate moment because we're both artists and i feel like when you share those type of things with people it's it's different than when you do it um in front of a whole bunch of different people because mm -hmm. we were really talking and we were having like moments and stuff and and it was a vibe and stuff so i really enjoyed that and i'm really happy that you were one of the first people that i interviewed for that piece because um uh it's it shows a lot of different um versions of artists artists in the metroplex so um hers is i like it especially like she's doing right now i love that type of artistry where where you do all the lines the the lines and the textures and stuff like that i really like that Thank and the, i think that was one of the pieces that you did like that at that event right um when you punctured yes. it you were yeah. doing that yeah and so um it's been like these periodic breakthroughs um i do like painting and altered states of consciousness and mm -hmm. so i'm gonna leave it at that um but i that's when i've had my greatest breakthroughs that's when i've discovered new techniques and it'll be just one painting with like one certain type of stroke and all of a sudden all of my art starts mirroring that technique and so really when i started doing this more like impressionist style um that's man i feel like this is something that's just next level um yes. and so it's crazy because i never know what i'm going to create going into my artwork and i mean i've seen you paint like it doesn't seem like you have a plan going into it either and i think that's the best way to create because mm -hmm. it's really like you get in this flow state and in this zone and you take a step back after you finish that painting session it's like whoa <laughs> that yes. wasn't me mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so a lot of times i look at my art and i'm like that that wasn't me that was something greater than me S shining through me mm -hmm. working through me yeah. um so i give all glory to god you know um, of course you guys can believe in whatever you want to believe in but um christ saved my life so like when i say my paintings are so full of love and joy and positivity now and i'm starting to realize that i don't have to go through pain mm -hmm. to create great things um because i did think that for a while when i had all that self-doubt like i still doubt myself sometimes but the way that i was like even a few months ago um i just would get in my head and think like oh if i'm not going through something then i can't make art <laughs> a lot of people think like that actually I feel, yeah i feel that um uh most everyone feels the same way when they think about art that you have to have a uh, um a situation come out of it Where i do you actually, think that paradigm comes from um, honestly because a lot of great artists were noticed because of those tragic moments and tragic mm. things. And they were like, wow. Um, like you said earlier, like the times that you see me paint, I only paint live with for people off the vibe. The things that I paint that I plan out and I really like, I don't even show that stuff half of the time. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm wearing the, this is also um, Bella Art. Where is the thing? Okay, right there. This is all Bella Art, but um, that skull one, 
I took months on that and I didn't really post that. I didn't show it to nobody. I didn't paint it live or nothing. I really just, it was just me and the paint yeah. and the, and the uh, canvas and stuff. And it was just like me working on it. But um, honestly, I feel that I've never done it and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go. Um, I don't like painting when I'm sad and when I'm mad. Cause I'm like, I don't want my piece that I'm going to create to carry that. Right. And especially if somebody is going to buy it. Cause I'm like, I don't right. want that person to carry that, whatever it is, that emotion, that, that, um, expression at their place. Yes. It might be great. And may, maybe, it, you know, to them is something completely different. Cause of course it is, um, it's um, something that you you would just, you know, you have your own perspective on art. You're, it's never the same exact thing for anybody. Um, but I, I don't know. I just feel like my vibe wouldn't let me do that. Mm -hmm. So, but let me tell you, I've said this before. If I were to ever do um, a series like that, that is like a, something really tragic or emotional, man, I'd be rich. Yeah. I'd be like filthy rich off of that. I feel because it would be very expression, very. I would be very expressive on it. Mm. Well, and I mean, why do you create? Me right now? Yeah. Um, many reasons. I mean, I feel like with artistry, you're not able to just show what you're feeling but you're able to create feelings you're able to shift mm. them and everybody has their own perspective on it so like when i see yours it gives me a vibe right and not just this piece but like other pieces that i've seen and other things that um uh, she probably doesn't post a lot or doesn't show it but like i've seen some of her pieces and i looked up close and y'all know i could stare at a piece forever but like look at this one this one on the screen right now that one's a vibe to me because it gives me very when i first fell in love with um doing art mm. and the artist that um that i felt that it is very that it was more inspired by it gave me those vibes where it was just like, yes, I want to do more of those kind of pieces. Because I have a lot of pieces that aren't like this exactly, but are, are almost the same kind of technique. And I love them. And I feel they're very expressive. That's why I love watching you paint when you do it live. Because I'm like, she's going to give me that vibe I like. So it's <laughs> going to be, I'm going to be see, sitting there chilling, enjoying, um, uh, knowing what you're doing and how you're doing it to your piece because it's not always the same. So, but knowing you is even more of a of a enjoyment when whenever I'm like watching an artist paint live, even if it's like you know anyone here or mm -hmm. in the other states that I'm like um I'm normally at or whatnot. But it gives us um I would feel the audience it gives us a different perspective of what you're thinking because. We're looking at it and you're doing your thing and we're watching your work, but you're feeling something completely different than what we're thinking, most likely. Right? I guess it depends on how y'all are feeling. <laughs> um, okay, so um, tell me. There was this one time <clears throat> that um that you were painting that that at that event that you punctured the thing. Mm -hmm. Um you told me something on the strokes. What were you feeling on the strokes and when you were when you were doing the strokes on there? On well, that piece? I can't tell you what I told you that night. Um I remember there was a lot of like aggressive music that night and I may or may not have been menstruating. So <laughs> um I was just I don't know. I was just letting out like i don't know what yeah. i was going through that night but looking back at it i know i was going through something i just i couldn't tell you what now so um but i love that painting it's above my toilet <laughs> that girl sounded like <laughs> I can't <wait> TMI. <laughs> um it's okay um, um no one's ever gonna buy it that pun was not intended letting out things <laughs> but 
That was one of the things you said that night that you were like letting out and it was mostly anger that you told me that you were just like with every stroke, it was just like a thing and you have to do it a certain way and it goes like with the power or whatever. But I enjoy that because everybody that was there didn't hear that. They didn't know that. I still know it. So when you post it, I'll be like, man, I saw her when she did that. And I was just like, ooh, people probably thinking like, what's she going to do next? And she done stabbed that hoe. And it was just like, she was. Yeah. Because I, I remember I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, something's missing here. And I was like, do I want to stab it? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I started scraping it. Like with my paintings, I get really aggressive with my paintings. Like I'll bang it on the floor. I'll throw paint on it. I'll, um, you know, scratch it, like do all kinds of stuff. I'll add hot glue, tissue paper. Like it's very cathartic for yeah. me and mm -hmm. so um i know earlier you were talking about like you don't want to put a certain energy in your painting but um uh, i mean i i totally get that but like me personally like painting when i'm sad because i don't want to i mean i i do vent to people sometimes like my friends know sometimes you just gotta vent but i don't always want to vent to my friends so sometimes i vent to a canvas and when i'm painting like the intention is never to make a profit. And I don't want my art to ever be just to make a profit. Mm -hmm. And so um, my art is just a reflection of who I was in that moment in time when I created it. And it's going to, you know, vibe with the right people. Um, but I, my painting is for therapy mostly <laughs> most of the time um and it's just to kind of relay how i'm feeling the way some people journal mm -hmm. it's like that yeah right, for me yeah i i feel that and honestly maybe maybe it is for me in, in certain ways but like i don't always finish it right off mm -hmm. and i don't um i don't stick to one thing when it's like a free flow kind of thing like the the paintings that I do on cutters and covers normally, um, they end up being something else when I'm done. Right. So I only do the background here. And then when I take it off the show, meaning I'm not going to show it on the show no more, I continue at home on the private thing and I'm just me with the painting. And then I really go into detail and that will be a lot all in my face. And I'd be like, you know, doing the little lines and the little <laughs> dots and everything. But it it doesn't get to that level in public it only gets mm -hmm. to that level in private so it you know because what i look like over here crying in front of y'all and you know putting the little things or whatnot because yeah. sometimes that happens y'all i've definitely cried in front of my paintings not necessarily sad but i have done it like and i and i felt different things with it or whatnot um i've gone through breakups but I never really wanted to paint while I was like feeling the pain of the breakup. I always wanted to paint when I was feeling the the joy of the lesson that I learned. Mm. Because sometimes I'd be like, um, I'd be like, uh, I don't want it to be where I'm always going to be hurting. Because then I'm always going to be hating wanting to be with somebody. Mm. Or being in any type of relationship, friendship, anything work whatever it doesn't matter a relationship is as a whole you being involved in something with someone else but i never really wanted to dwell on the bad i've always wanted to dwell on the good so i could be like man i really did love that person and i really cooked whatever food at whatever time of the day or whatever because they wanted it and i always did that one little thing having because you know it was just like that but that's kind of how i feel with the painting when i'm in in that piece i'm like man ain't nobody else getting this type of attention ain't nobody else getting this <laughs> nobody else is gonna be seeing me go through this process looking cute ugly because you know we'd be looking cute but people be like oh she's fine kind of thing you know that's a fine little 
a, a situation you have going on painting looking situation. at yeah because you because you know y'all when you're doing any kind of artistry we're looking a little busted we got the hair <laughs> up, the, the curls looking all dumb you know one popping out the way or whatever in sweats the tank top usually looking you know but they'd be cute as hell because you t um if i see that i'm gonna be like hey shorty hey, you know shorty. but <laughs> It's it's really an artistry when you when you get into the sessions like that. So I don't like people seeing that part of me. I, I feel like y'all get yeah. enough already. Calm down. <laughs> I feel that. I mean, and like you said, you may start it at an event, but you go home and it becomes something else. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every time we step in front of the canvas, we are a different artist. Because yeah. you learn something about yourself every time you pick up a paintbrush. Uh, me personally. Um, yeah, Bella's not on her head, so I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I may start out with anger and rage and end it with healing and understanding. Man, that's facts. And it's like, it, letting it out and releasing it, like you have to feel things. Like you have to go through your emotions sometimes. We're emotional beings. Yeah. We're not meant to be happy and joyful all the time you know and um i mean there's always going to be storms there's always going to be things that we have to go through you just have to look at that not as you know something that's going against you but something that's happening for you because you you know you can't excuse the storm like the storms are going to come you just have to see it as preparation and as a test because once you pass that test you know you may be going over the same test over and over again you may feel like you're going in circles over and over again but little did you know that while you're going in circles you're actually going up yes. it's like a spiral staircase and so once you look back you know because if you look back at yourself like five years prior to where you are right now you're a completely different person oh yeah and so it just is about understanding that even when it feels like you're stagnant you're still growing you're still learning yes for sure uh, I would say that we still always keep a baseline of ourselves, especially mm. if you're not that type of person that like always wants to like reinvent yourself. You always tend to keep, you know, the little lessons or, or the big ones because some things be hurting. So, you right. know, you definitely gonna remember is, um, you know, when your parents used to be like, um, uh, like, I don't know, people do kind of like the slap or the, we call it, some people call it a cocotazo, meaning like, you know, you get a little, a little smack in the arm or whatever kind of thing, right? Mm. When you, when, uh, I've lost my turn of thought, y'all, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, let me, let me switch back to you. Let me take the attention off of me. I'm sorry. I got nervous. <laughs> oh, you were on a roll. Sir. I know, I really was though. That's okay. If you remember, you can come back to it. Yes, no, but I want to ask you a question. I want to know uh, what is something that you want to do next, like another venture that you, you that you're like apart from artistry. This is something that I would really want to experience and want to try. Oh yeah, so I mean, one of my main focuses right now is growing my leadership skills because true leaders help build other people, and that's what I want to do. Like whenever I help people that's when I feel the happiest because the focus is taken off of me mm -hmm. it's taken off of my ego and like even just you know helping a few people start making money and start like doing other things and growing their mindset it makes me feel so good like I almost feel better about their success than I do my own yes and so it just makes me want to impact more and grow my leadership skills even more and so that's my main focus right now so um, I mean, the vision is too big, like, not too big. The vision is so big, it's yes. just big enough, like, <laughs> but I know things are coming that are even out of my comprehension to what I can accomplish right now, so um, I'm just working and striving. I, I'm not trying to get all up in my goals, because if you talk about it too much, then... Oh, um, yeah, I agree completely. Can't talk about your goals too much. You, you can't talk about sometimes. your goals too much, especially because you be out here and uh, your haters be watching you all the time. <laughs> I didn't look over there on purpose, y'all. I'm just looking to see who's in here. <laughs> but um, for real, your haters be watching you, so you can't always just 
blab everything out there. You got to kind of choose and pick what you're willing to to share with people. Mm -hmm. Um, And just still let them know that you're out here working and you're hustling and you're, you know, creating your your dreams into reality. Yeah. What you do in the dark (laughs) will, you know, come to fruition into light and good and bad. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, you just got to keep keep growing, keep grinding, you know. So, so tell me whenever uh whenever you're out here in the streets of Dallas <laughs> <laughs> with your friends doing her right things, I'm just kidding. Oh my um, goodness. When you're out here in the streets um experiencing the Dallas artistry, what is um one of your favorite things to do? Um live painting. You <laughs> doing it or watching it? So doing it actually because when i first started out doing art shows like i um kind of just had my table set up and the first time i live painted because i get distracted so easily i get bored so easily and it really does make the time pass Mm -hmm. um and so but i really don't get out a lot i feel like i'm an introverted extrovert and right now i feel like i'm in a phase of isolation in my life Um, Like, I haven't really been doing events. It's really just been, like, low-key doing things behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I got a lot. Like I said, like, mindset is everything. So that's what I've been working on. Well, I'm glad that you're working on that for yourself and you're doing that. I really um, enjoy uh, watching you paint live. So I know that other people do. So for you to enjoy it as well, that's, that's a great thing. Um, which one was your first live uh, painting event? Oh, good question. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> Honestly, Do you remember I'd have to paint it. I'd have to go back in the archives. My memory is so bad, y'all. Girl, and she's young. I'm, I know. I'm, I'm so only so twenty-two. Twenty-two. <laughs> oh, I just felt so <laughs> old, y'all. That's when I moved to Texas. Oh, really? Good Where in. are you from, Bella? Good in. Um, I was born in Cali, but I was also raised there and in oh, Florida. Sweet. In Hollywood, Florida, Miami area. Nice. I love nice. California. It reminds me um, a lot of Austin. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, like, similar energy. It does I love have Austin so much. a lot of similar energy. Um, honestly, growing up, I don't know why I always thought that Cali was warm warm that hoe is cold as hell y'all compared to texas yeah especially compared to texas cali is really that place that you have to have to carry a sweater at the minimum a jacket if you're like me probably both right because as soon as you hit a shade as soon as you hit shade, it don't matter where it's at, y'all. You're next to the Pacific Ocean, okay? That hoe is cold. You're getting that wind. No matter where the shade is, it is cold. So as soon as it starts to get dark, that's it. It's cold. It's mm. usually windy, too. You feel that. And it's like, I don't know. I can't do it. And, I mean, I've been wearing sweaters, and I've been sweating. I've been wearing um, uh, the uh, sweatsuits and stuff like that out here because, you know, they're my, they're my brand. But... Y'all know me. I like being cute and dressed up and stuff. And I want to be all girly. And uh, a sweater and a jacket is not going to cut it in Cali for me all the time. I'm going to have to be looking like I'm in fall and wearing those trench coats and stuff. I'll I'll have to be fall cute for the summer because as soon as it gets dark, you know, I'm going to be cold. So It is too hot for that. Well, yeah. But even here, y'all, I carry a jacket everywhere. Everywhere. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I I do get cold really easily indoors, but I mean, it's been so hot, especially this summer, like breaking yeah, record, really. record heat, y'all. So it's really hot. Oh wait, we had a question on Instagram Live. Um, would you ever create a room of life full of paints? What does that mean? What do you mean? Try again, sir, Ma- madam, person. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean? Can you clarify? Uh, what inspired to inspired her to start painting in the first place? So um, I started out doing digital art, and then um, there was one night I just decided to pick up some paint, 
And that one painting really sparked a fire in me that's just been burning ever since in like a beautiful way. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I just made the decision to create and it, I mean, you just got to make the decision. Like everybody's creative. It doesn't matter. You can be creative in the kitchen. You can be creative, um, like in math, you can be creative in the way you dress. It's not just art. It's not just painting and photography. Like there's so many different ways to be creative. And I hear so many people tell me that they're not creative people. I hate when people tell me that. As soon as they find out that I'm an artist, they're like, oh, I can't do artistry like that. I'm like, yeah, creativity is a choice. It really is because let me tell y'all how some people will be like, I can't do nothing but DIY the hell out of their whole house. Bro, that's art. Yeah. Come into my house because right. the weed Next. and a couple things. I I hate it when people say that because, to be honest with you, everything is an art like that, and it really does come off to other people in different perspectives. So it doesn't really matter what you're doing as long as you're doing it with your feelings and your and your heart really and showing the full effect of what you're going through and what your train of thought is. Is gonna come out beautiful to someone because, bruh, there be people out here uh, being a fan of some crazy ass stuff. So art, as soon as you do anything that is like artistic, there's somebody that's gonna be a fan of it because it just it moves people in so many different ways. In so many different ways, mm -hmm. I I really enjoy it. Um, speaking of create. I wanted to um, uh, uh, point out that on AsulBella.com, there's a, um, my I Create uh, Art edition, which it shows everything that you create. I should have brought one of the shirts. So if you're a chef, it says I cook art, and I have some, um, uh, what are they called? The things that you put on? Aprons. The oh. aprons. Thanks, friend. The oh, aprons. Um, I... Um, you know what? I'm so crazy. I didn't even do I paint art. I'm so done. But there's <laughs> there's I build art. There's I rap art, sing art, uh, spin art for the DJs. Um, so many different variety of things. So you guys look out for those. Check out for them because they're so there's such a vibe. I've given a couple of them um, to some DJs out in different states that I've been to. And when they put it on, it's so cute and it looks so good on them. The artists, um, I have a couple poets in Dallas that have a um, there's a I speak art mm. and then I dance art for all the dancers out there. Not like I mean strippers too, cause y'all be getting out here dancing. Yeah, hey. y'all really be doing some aerobics up there, cause <laughs> it is so hard to be doing them things. Well, you gotta be but athletic, super athletic to be out here <laughs> doing that. Man, they Take be some yes in the gym every day. Yeah. Uh, but there's a, a lot of different variety of, of kind of artistry that you could do. So make sure you check that out um, on the website. But um, I want to ask you another thing. Uh, let me see if Instagram. Reading this um, oh, we're holding up really good. They're asking how we're holding up in Dallas with the flooding and stuff. How y'all mm. feeling out here? How you doing, audience? Man. <laughs> swimming <laughs> um yeah we're doing really good in dallas we're not too bad would you ever create a room full of art i guess like fill up the whole room oh like murals and stuff mm -hmm. yeah Mural up the whole room yeah honestly i'm still at a point where like murals are so intimidating to me they really are though it's such a big canvas I be thinking like, what if I I um I've done some murals, but not like even bigger than than you know a room, regular room, or whatnot. And I always think like, when I get to the point that I do like you know deep deep ellum type style ones, because I'm mm -hmm. gonna get there, y'all. Quote me on that. Um, when when I get there, I be in my mind now like you know freaking my freaking out point because I know I'm gonna do it and it's gonna come out bomb as hell, but. Um, in my freaking out moment now, <clears throat> I'd be thinking like, what if I design it and stuff and then it's like measured wrong <laughs> where like oh, part no. of the face or the eye or something is supposed to look right, but it's like wrong. And I'm like, I know some people would be like, that's fire. 
But then I'm going to be like, that was not supposed to be there. <laughs> it does not look right. Oh, man. I be thinking about that so much. Like, yeah. it really does. It's like a bad nightmare kind of thing. But I felt like even still, whatever, it'll still be artistry. So, you know. Well, I mean, and most of the time, the things that we dislike about our paintings are the things that other people like the most, the most. about our paintings. How do you feel about that thing? Um, somebody just recently told me something like this that I should let people buy my art as soon as they feel like, like if I'm doing a light painting, right? Like how, how um, he said, I like that. How much for it, right? And you're like, mm. it's not even done. She barely has started. But like, how do you feel about that? When somebody, let's say somebody would be like, I want it just like this. I love it already. Mm. Would you sell it or would you be like, no, it's not done yet? I mean, I know, right? I can't really go against what I just did 20 minutes ago or however long it was. Um, so, yes, you can. You definitely can, ma'am. You could change your mind five seconds ago. <laughs> oh my goodness. I never know what to price my art. Oh, uh, yeah, at. that's really hard, too. And I think, because I don't even have a website yet. Like, any website builders in the house? Uh, yeah, it's yourself. <laughs> It is easy, but no, cat. Okay, well, I'm going to give it you too, girl, because it's easy and hard. Oh, my goodness. Because we're like artists and we see the visual, but then, you know, we don't, we're not techie to that extent. Mm -hmm. And, like, the lower third, you guys, do y'all know what the lower third is? Because Radu taught me that, and, like, two weeks ago, I was like, what is that thing that you taught me again? Bruh, the lower third is that right there. You see my name? You see my name and the and the handles? That's what a lower third is called. Mm. Like I didn't know that? this. Like your name, like your title, I guess, or whatever. Your description, I guess, of who you are. That's what a lower, lower third is called, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I'm going to know all these tricks and little tricks of a website. I'd be looking at that thing like Squarespace. If you don't freaking act right, and it really be me. Because I, I don't be knowing what I be doing out there. Do you use Squarespace? Yes, that's what I use. Okay. Squarespace. I know a lot of people that use Squarespace. I, from the times that I did play around with it, I thought Wix was more uh, user-friendly. I, I have a lot of I've variety never, of like, pe what people tell me. Yeah. I think it's more of a you thing. That's true. You know, where... It's where you thing. Yes, where... You kind of just find what is flowing for you. Because some of the other ones, which I won't mention the ones I'm not using. <laughs> but some of the other ones that I did um, try out for just literally one day. Because I was like, nah, this is not for me. I can't do it. I, I won't get... It, it doesn't feel like a flow to me. Mm -hmm. And I needed it to feel like a flow. Because if I already had to do something I didn't want to do, it needed to feel like... it's easy i could do it it's manageable yep. even if it's like my pain point i whatever i gotta do it um but to me it was just like oh my gee how and i would forget that some things i could do on my phone some things i can and it was just like very frustrating it honestly made me feel at first like i don't really want to do art no more because i have to figure out all these background things and it's just like I'm good with that. I mean, I'll bust out some really good art mm -hmm. if I could only focus on that. But I can't because I'm a business person and I have to focus on everything that has to do with my business. Mm. And even though it's a passion, I mean, I've created a business out of my passion, but it's still business things that have to go with it, you know? So you kind of also have to prepare for that. So let me tell you this as somebody that has been doing art for, for a lot more years and, and whatnot. And just older, I guess. Um, do it with, like, the intent that you currently have up until the point that you want to, like, do something else. Because if you feel that it's work right now, which sometimes you might, because I already know how it goes when you're doing, like, events and things like that. And you have a lot of things to do. And you have a day job. Right. Do it with the intent that you know that whenever you start doing everything else, is going to be 24-7. Like, for real. There's going to be days and weeks and months even where you're like, I don't want to do art no more. I, mean, I don't want to do this. entrepreneurship to a T. Yes, but exactly. But it becomes that. Right. Which right now to you is just your artistry. It's your passion. And that's like, you know, for me, my, I turned my passion, one of my passions into one of my businesses. 
So I guess it's still by bought with other different things, other ventures, but this specifically is literally art. So <clears throat> when you're choosing to express it, you're choosing to express it in, in a certain perspective right now. But when you make it into a business, you have to look at it from every angle. You can't just look at it as in, I want to paint this because of what it is and what I felt. You got to look at it as in, is this a painting that I'm going to um, uh, be able to make money and product from? Mm. Or is it just a passion painting? Because you have to make the difference on that. Some of my pieces, I'm like, it's cute. Somebody might like it, but I'm not going to sit here and do a bunch of product off of it because I can't. Mm. You know, you have to think about it as... You basically have to take yourself out of the, the picture and put yourself in front of yourself and telling yourself, hey, nah, I see what you're saying or whatever, right. and I love you, friend, but you got to shut that down and just put it in your icons because it's not going to sell. You know, you gotta you got to be hard with yourself like that mm. and not hurt your own feelings because you will hurt your own feelings sometimes. And it will be like, dang, man, but this is cute. And, and I feel like it's so cute. Somebody's going to like it. Yes, for sure. For sure. A lot of people are going to like it. But, like, is it going to be a thing that is stamping your mark, your brand, your thing? Like, you have to kind of think about it in a, in a different way as well. But, I mean, I feel like you're doing amazing. And I feel like you should stay in this zone a little bit longer. Um, and if you don't... Um, staying a little bit longer. Have somebody else do that shit for you. For real. Yeah. Well, and I think because I have other streams of income, it's, good. it's yeah. not like I have to sell my art or I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. Because <laughs> it do be like and that. And so um, right now, from the other ventures that I have going, art is more of a hobby for me. And it's like my passion project. And um, my my home my apartment looks like a whole art gallery like yes, there really there is art everywhere like on every wall where there can be art it's there um and i know at some point like i don't know i'm being patient with my process like i've got so much time and um like i said i've got other sources of income so i'm not really tripping about it but i definitely do want to get to that point where um, I incorporate more of the business aspect and, like, actually have a website and everything. That's one of my goals by the end of the year is to get a website up. I, I think you could definitely do it. And, yeah. and um, I mean, you could do it really easy over a weekend maybe, you That's know. True. But but um, the focus is just focus on it. I will tell you that for sure. Just, like, keep your focus on it and just complete it all the way through and just, you know, and, and um, get it rolling. But, um uh, so we had another question on the yeah. live. It says, um, for me, I guess, do you start your canvas with a color background or pl or plain? Which you did a color one today, right? You painted it all the way through? Yeah, and usually that's what I do. Um, most of the time it's not just one color. Like I'll pick, I mean, I guess I will pick a color and then I'll take different shades and, you know, mix it all Blend together. Um, and so usually most of the time it's like a pretty solid background. Like it'll be purple with multiple different shades and varieties. Um, there's different ways that I apply that first layer, um, in order to create a certain texture that I want. Um, and so it really just depends on how I'm feeling. I like to explore different, um, options and techniques. Um, one of my favorite ways is using my hands and creating like this really cool um texture that i don't have an explanation mm -hmm. for what kind of texture it is she's used her feet too before yeah y'all feet freaks <laughs> <laughs> one in the room <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> i'm calling her out that's funny <laughs> um well <clears throat> I'm really, um, I'm glad that you've been able to share your artistry with us today and, yeah. and like letting us get to know you a little bit more and, um, uh, being okay. able to explore your vibe and stuff. So, uh, another question, where would you want to paint live? Where's somewhere, somewhere that you've already thought, not here, not Ooh. in the U S um, not in the U S 
now that you say that, like, I'm realizing I've never really thought about it. No. I mean, I would like to paint everywhere, just uh, what kind of events. Um, a lot of the events that I kind of started out with were um, more, like, music-focused events, um, like open mic nights and stuff like that. Um, I would like to get into more, like, daytime events where people are actually coming to see art. Yes. And the art is the main focus. And I can actually, like, talk to people and network and, you know, um, meet um, some beautiful souls. Um, I, I love getting to know people. And so I would like to do more stuff like that. And I just want to travel everywhere. Like Same, girl. Same. Just get out there and do things. Yeah. And I want to set up, like, people in the in, in the past. Like, they used to just set up their canvas and their, their easel anywhere and mm -hmm. just paint and, like, different sceneries and stuff. Bob Ross it out somewhere. But... Um, Bob Ross it out. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. like, I want to do it in, in, like, modern places now where you see, like, the beauty of the new modern world also mixed mm -hmm. with the beauty of nature and just, like, you know. I don't know. I want to find that perfect vibe where it shows that. But um, I definitely agree with painting live places and doing things like that and expressing your vibe in front of people where they could really see it um, as well as to different artistries. Because like what we do here on Colors and Covers, um, I tend to go off of the artist's vibe where if they're singing, performing in any kind of music artistry that their vibe is what we're going off of and, and what's what I'm feeling or whatnot was being expressed on the canvas. So for you to do that live in different events, it's such a vibe. And if you guys get a chance to go and see her, check her out. Um, can you tell the people your handle one more time so they could uh, follow you and yeah, see where you're going to be at? Of course. I'll probably be posting this one soon. I didn't think I was going to finish it today, but I feel like I feel like it's finished. So. I love it. I love it. I'm happy. Um, but my Instagram is going to be Tay, T-A-Y dot King Rogers, uh, Rogers with a D. Um, and so, yeah, if you want to see more of my art, um, I do post my progress through my stories. Um, not always. I'll skip a few layers sometimes, you know, mm, yeah. keep the mystery alive. Um, but yeah, definitely check me out and, um, I'm just, I'm super grateful and honored to um, be in this space with you and be working with you and Kat and um, doing this live <laughs> production. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I haven't done anything like this, so I really appreciate you for having me on. I'm so happy that you're here today and you got to share um, some time with us and stuff. So I'm really glad that you were able to do this and I definitely want you back and I want you to vibe out where... Um, another artist is providing you that vibe so you could give us, you know, a, a different perspective of your artistry where you could just flow with it. So I would love to have you back in the in the studio with us here in live in Dallas so then we could get to see um, a different artistry from you. But um, thank you so much for letting us get to know you a little bit more and experiencing you from a different perspective than what we normally get here in, in the Metroplex. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, are you doing any events anytime soon? Do you know of any off the top of your head? I currently do not have anything lined up. I'm actually about to go to Arizona for a trip. Um, I won't be doing art out there, um, but we'll... We'll see what happens, you know. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned for sure. Stay tuned. Um, well, I'm glad that that... Um, wait, wait, wait. Is Arizona business or pleasure? It's a business trip. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are you looking to get into pleasure, like, out there to, like, you know, work on some art and stuff? Because I've definitely gone to states and, like, quickly Instacarted art supplies to myself. Oh, to gotcha. To go to an event. I'm serious, girl. I it's mean, possible. I mean, I might take like a little mini kit oh, yeah. and do some inspired art um yeah so if we'll anybody's see. in we'll arizona like if plane. you're checking us out and you're out there and you want to throw out some um suggestions or where you think she should check out and if there's any events that she could leave uh, paint live hit her up
so she could get her name out there in Arizona and you guys could see her vibe out in person and and um she'll show you her artistry yeah. but um I'm really happy that you were here with us today and that you got to experience it um one last thing that the live said um we do have these sweaters on the website uh if you want one that is a hoodie this one's a sweater you gotta get with me on that so just dm me. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys thank you so much for checking us out today um uh from wherever you are in the world because i'd be seeing where you guys are checking us out from um thank you so much we appreciate you guys we're gonna be back tomorrow on instagram live where we get to a vibe by with this beautiful artist right here in the background um she's coming straight from florida and she's going to be live on Instagram with me tomorrow. Uh, so make sure you tune in. Her vibe is amazing. She is a dope artist. And then we're going to be back here next week with another dope um, Metroplex artist out here in Dallas. So make sure you tune in with us. And uh, we'll see you next week at 8 p.m. Peace. Yeah. Good job.